Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Belief of being a divine person is the ignition switch for realizing your potential lying dormant. In the last lecture, we basically looked at the gaseous fuel and its properties and heating value of the liquid fuels and also various kinds of liquid fuels and oxidizer. And today, we will be looking at properties of the liquid fuels. If you look at the very important property is the specific gravity, because it is fuel, liquid fuel is being used for in transportation. So, therefore, the specific gravity plays a very important role and which is defined as the ratio of mass of density of fuel to the mass density of water at the same temperature. Right. Of course, uh, the people use uh, the standard temperature. Right and Sg is basically rho fuel divided by rho water and uh, reference temperature is being taken as basically for fuel and water is 298.8 Kelvin. Okay. And um, of course, the American Petroleum Institute, he has developed a scale by which you can use and uh, that is known as API scale, API Sg will be 141.5 divided by Sg minus 131.4. Of course, they use it uh, and these are all some constant values and whereas, why not we can use this um, Sg, the question might be coming to your mind, right. Why not use Sg, why should I use API Sg, right. And uh, they have devised this, uh, they claim that it can be used for basically finding out a relationship between the he higher heating value and APISG. So, they have come up with a uh, formula right for the gasoline HHV is equal to LHV plus 93 APISG minus 10 and the unit is basically kilojoule per kg right. And for kerosene they have uh, come with the similar formula right and the constants are same, it may be valid for these constants may change for various fuel, keep in mind. And these are all semi empirical, you may use, you may not use, otherwise you can get the SG, you can relate your find out your own way of doing the thing, right. It is not necessary to use this one, but however, it will be handy earlier days people were designing. So, they will be very, you know, easily do that to calculate and other things, but today, you know, it is a different thing. And uh, some of you are told that uh, basically self ignition temperature or auto ignition temperature, it is the lowest temperature required to make the combustion self sustained without any external head, right. Suppose I will remove this ignition source, but it will be going on, right. If the temperature attained by the fuel, you know, if it is a low, let us say auto ignition temperature low that means, you know it is very easy to ignite because I will give very little amount of energy so that it will go to that temperature and after that is self sustained right. Even if I withdraw the ignition source then still it will be uh, combustion will be taking place. Lower the self ignition temperature auto ignition better it will be. However, it will be having problem. What is the problem? Hazardous because if by mistake something is happening then you know all fuel will be getting burnt or uh, uh, coming in contact with the oxygen. So, therefore, it will be dangerous. So, there is another property which is known as flash point. Flash point is basically minimum temperature at which liquid fuel will produce sufficient vapors to form a flammable mixture with air. I think you are talking about this point like where vaporization will be there, right, some amount of vapor. And this is known as flash point. Flash point is occurring that does not mean that it will be self sustained combustion. Okay. It may have a flash some kind of a little fire and after that it may extinguish. Right. So, 
that means why it is required because it indicates the maximum temperature at which liquid fuel can be stored without any fire hazard right because if you go beyond this then only the flash will occur then only fire hazard will occur otherwise if you are below you are storing then you are safe so for storage it is very important to take you know aware about what is the flash point of the fuel right so there is another uh, you know uh, temperature which is known as a uh, minimum uh, fire point and fire point is the minimum temperature at which liquid fuel produces sufficient vapors to form a flame mixture with air that will continuously support the combustion right but the flash point will just have a flash it may not sustain or rather it won't sustain but in this case flame will sustain right that is the difference between flash point and fire point as I told that it will be after just flashing the flame will be continuing, but in case of flash point there will be flash it may stop or it may not right. There is also a another point which is known as another property is known as smoke point. It is a basically a measure the tendency of liquid fuel to produce soot right ok. There is a also similar things is being utilized for the gaseous fuel as well right there will be smoke point where it will be started smoking right and smoke is must be avoided ok. There is a cloud point the temperature at which wax crystal starts forming from a liquid fuel when it is cooled. Suppose you cool the things you know it became wax being formed and wax being formed means you know it will be very difficult to use as a fuel particularly in the cold country or cold region like Himalayan region other thing in winter if the you know cloud point or the temperature reaches then you know it is very difficult to start the engine you know right. So, therefore, it will be better that you know you should be uh, you know uh, avoided right. So, these things are to be there from uh, for the liquid fuels. Let us uh, look at a typical values what I am trying to uh, you know give here that is the specific gravity automotive gasoline there might be different gasoline like you know like aviation gasoline will be different than the automotive gasoline right. And uh, it values is 0 0.07 to 0 0.78 and diesel of course 0 0.85 that means what 0 0.85 means what with respect to water this density ok. If it is 1000 you take that means it will be 850 kg per meter cube right and methanol is uh, 0.796 you can say around 0.8, kerosene is 0.82. Of course, this is you know like ATF, ATF you know what is the meaning aviation turbine fuel, this is JP8 there will be several like JP10 there are various kinds of fuel are being used uh, particularly aerospace people they will be knowing. This is like kinematic viscosity is very important because if the viscosity is very high then what will happen? it is difficult to atomize right and then if it is not atomized then you cannot really burn properly you cannot burn it properly. So, boiling point range you know also very important and I have already discussed about flash point if you look at uh, the lowest is the uh, gasoline and auto ignition temperature if you look at highest is the methanol right whereas the uh, gasoline is uh, next one and the kerosene is lowest a little dangerous you know like use kerosene as in among all this fuel right. And uh, stoichiometric uh, air fuel mass if you look at most of them around 15 ok and this is 6.43 and this is a heat of vaporization generally we use the lower heating value for our calculation purposes ok. Uh, that is the lowest one all other things are around 40 to 50, 45 mega joule per kg ok. This is a very large amount of heat ok. So, let us look at uh, solid fuel and oxidizer there are various kinds of fuel like wood, coal, charcoal, soft coke, biomass, animal dung I mean basically cow dung we use and propellants right. 
And uh, if you look at constituents of solid fuel, what it would be? Of course, you know, carbon will be there, right? Hydrogen will be there, you know, that is the thing. And what else other thing? There will be several other things. Carbon will be there, hydrogen will be there, ash will be there, nitrogen will be there, oxygen will be there, sulfur and water content will be there, right? But see, it is very difficult how to put a chemical formula, you know, like it is very difficult. But however, I have given a simple model, not I have given, it is given by others, I am just quoting. Uh, like uh, they have said that C H N O M, these are the values, you know, like 1.78, 0 0.56, sawdust 1.65, 0 0.69, these are all semi empirical things, right. And keep in mind that there is a, some complex formulas will be there also, chemical, uh, you know, this thing where the nitrogen is coming into pictures and sulfur is also coming into picture. This is some, but I have taken the simplest one. So, so types of uh, solid fuels, if you look at biomass, the biomass several of them, wood, sawdust, rice husk, rice straw, wheat straw and several of them, right? Anything, uh, whatever even like uh, things it you can burn. And it is uh, used for domestic or engine application because uh, you can produce the bio producer gas out of this biomass. And uh, coal, coal, charcoal, you know, you can use same application. The special fuel like nitrocellulose, nitroglycerin is basically oxidizer, and STPV, hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, and CTPV. CTPV means carboxy terminated polybutadiene. These are used by ISRO uh, profusely, but there will be several other fuels in propellants and uh, ammonium percolate as an oxidizer, ammonium nitrate, nitrogen tetraoxide, these are all oxidizers, right, can be used. And it is used for solid propellant rocket engine, hybrid propellant rocket engines and other things, which we will be not uh, dealing with, but for the completeness sake, I have just included here. Let us look at basically oxygen, water and content of certain solid fuels, basically moisture will be free and bounded. Free means if you just vaporize, it will go away and uh, will affect because fuel moisture, why we are concerned about moisture of solid fuel? Because it will affect the rate of combustion and overall efficiency. First of all, you will have to supply amount of energy so that it will vaporize, right. Beside this, if it is there, then it will hamper the combustion to take place, right. And as the inorganic materials which remain as a right, beside this, if it is there, then it will hamper the combustion to take place, right. And as the inorganic materials which remain as a residue even after complete combustion takes place. So, therefore, this cannot be burnt, you know, it will be a, just you are carrying a piggy back under uh, your, in your shoulder, you know, like as a fuel. So, therefore, it is wasted. As content also affect the performance of combustor because it will be, you know, what you call on the layers, it will be like acting like insulations and then absorbing the heat, therefore, combustion efficiency. As content of coal causes fouling of the boilers and when it will emit, it will causing a lot of problems. And uh, if you look at uh, the given some of the fuel like wood, peat, lignite coal, bituminous coal, anthracite coal, uh, if you look at the, these are the constituents which are, uh, you know, are there in the range, the oxygen generally, uh, wood will be lot of things will be there, uh, dry as and as free. Like whereas uh, as moisture is much more in the wood, uh, right, as compared to anthracite coal, and as is very less, right, here. Yeah. But whereas the these coals is uh, Indian coals, you know, will be having something 20 to 40 percent of us. That is the biggest challenge, right, for uh, us to handle. How to handle those kind of coal, which we are having a very a good, you know, very vast reservoir we are having. So, characterization of solid fuels, if you look at, there are two ways of looking at, one is proximate analysis, that is used to determine moisture content, volatile metal, fixed carbons and as content in the solid fuel, like, because this moisture content is very, uh, you know, important, you have to find out what is the volatile content. Why you look at volatile content? Because that will help to ignite because it will be gaseous fast, you know. 
and fixed carbon which will give a sustainable combustion and as content of course, uh, it should be minimized. So, that that hampers the combustion and we need to determine water content few grams of fuel is heated around 378 Kelvin till it attains constant weight. So, this is generally a procedure a standard what is being used to uh, you know analyze this thing and volatile matter uh, you know can be determined provided if it is heated the you know the sample is heated at 1200 Kelvin for certain period of time. So, these are uh, to be done such that you will find out ultimate analysis basically uh, various methods are used like uh, because you need to determine the major elements right what are the things is having compositions and for that you will have to use uh, you know chemical methods for getting the nitrogen content and sulfur method is evaluated by the precipitation methods right and of course, calorie value can be determined by the bomb calorimeter. See what I am trying to give you basically a general view how you can do because these are the important things to be done uh, particularly know the constituents of the solid fuels. So, that you can come up with a empirical formula as I told C H O like M and N as a coefficient I have put it or a <coughs> such that you can you know uh, do a some calculations and understand what is happening. That is one uh, objective other objective is to basically look at what it contains you know. So, uh, various combustion modes will be there right because now we are talked about the fuel now we should understand wh what kind of combustion will be taking place right. So, if you look at uh, the combustion can be broadly divided into flame mode and flameless mode because flame is the genesis of combustion ok. And the flame mode is basically premix flame one combustion there is a another mode is the diffusion flame right. And uh, there is a another mode which is partially premix premix flame right. If you look at premix means where fuel and oxidizer are mixed before the combustion takes place right. The example is Bunsen burner, LPG stove and other things right. And, and whereas, the diffusion flame is like where the fuel and oxidizer will be mixed on the surface of the combustion or on the surface of the flame or during the combustion right. Now, and partial premix it is in between if you look at premix is basically what it will be uh, premix means it is love marriage ok. <laughs> and diffusion flame means basically arranged marriage where you do not know each other you will marry partial premix love and arrange together that is the combustion what you will be talking about right. Are you getting? So, now which is good, which is bad, which is ugly is a matter of debate and discussion. As you go along, we will see, particularly you remember this thing <laughs> corollary, and when I will get into premix flame and then uh, diffusion flame, we will discuss. Okay. And again, based on the flow, we can divide into two categories one is laminar flame and turbulent flame, right. And if you look at flameless mode is a smoldering combustion, smoldering combustion you know what is that? Any of you take cigarette smoking right, smoking you have seen na? is there any flame, but this is smoldering is occurring right. Even the carbon when you look at there is no flame as such carbon is burning right, then it will be glowing and then moving right. So, that is smoldering that nowadays it is not the uh, smoldering is the flameless combustion there is a, uh, a combustion coming off is flameless the we will do it artificially right. So, that there would not be any flame I had done some work uh, on that earlier and um, that is a new technology which is coming up new way of doing the combustion right. <coughs> so, the if you look at the environment 
pollution is very important because combustion of any fuel produces a certain amount of smoke, ash, soot and other harmful gases. Right. And uh, major pollutants generated during combustion, what are those? Basically carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, unburnt hydrocarbon, right, these are the and others, right, maybe ash, then smoke, then soot particles, right, all those things will be coming. But those are causing a lot of problem and why this coming particularly carbon, carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbon, these are basically due to incomplete combustion, right. And it can be minimized by enhancing the residence time of the fuel and oxidizer mixture in the combustor or you can provide more amount of oxygen so that or oxidizer rather so that combustion can take place to the full extent right and because of these things there is a lot of concern across the globe right and people are saying because we are all using a lot of combustion systems for our transportation for our food for our you know like other activities producing electricity, then emission is coming. Therefore, across the globe, you know, people are trying to uh, make the emission standard stringent day by day. For example, 2000, this is a uh, BS, you know, Bharat standard 1 nationwide 2000. Uh, it was a very, very low, you know, like a very, very higher, you know, uh, values like a CO and CO2, all those things numbers are there. But in 2004, the people started using Euro 4 and China 1 and China 3 and, and Bharat standard 2, right. And 2010, we are saying nationwide, right, we will be doing and of course, uh, 2015, the Bharat standard uh, 4 in the major cities, what I would suggest, I am not uh, put those numbers, what are the values because it will be very vast. For diesel engine, it will be different. For petroleum engine, different. For the uh, you know what you call buses, will be different. So the numbers are different. Okay, they have given. So therefore, I thought due to paucity of time, I will not discuss. But what I am trying to draw your attention is that that look at it is becoming more stringent and stringent, and then people are trying to devise this so that they will regulate, right? But now that means technology has to come up. Otherwise, you know, we will be in trouble. What is happening now? They are developing technology, they are saying you buy us and we become pauper. <laughs> are you getting? So, therefore, we need to develop our technology, understanding the combustion and utilizing so that we need not to depend on them. More and more, we are depending on them because they are framing the rule and they are saying you will have to do it. Otherwise, you will be in trouble, they will twist arms, right? And let me tell you that uh, emission by source at this 2000, like energy emission means industry, power, transport and building, right. These are energy related, you know, this thing. But other resources will be waste, agriculture, land use, you know, right. Land use uh, and uh, agriculture major contributor in this, waste, wastage is very less, right means land use means basically deforestation kind of thing, deforestation is increasing. That means we, our main concern is here combustion, energy emissions, you know, where combustion is plays a very important role. And that has to be looked at, otherwise we are in deep trouble. It is not that you will be solving this problem by the technology, you cannot. Of course, technology is required, but you need to also minimize the utility utilization of energy because India is a populous country, right. We cannot look at the model what western people, they say that if the energy congestion per capita is higher means you are developed. I say that we will define other way around. If energy congestion is the lowest, we are developed, right. We should go other way around. Unfortunately, nobody is talking about it because if you will increase the congestion, right, it is a problem <laughs> for everybody and emission will be more, energy uh, cost will be more, will be dependent on them, their petroleums will be, will be more, will be more independent on them, right. So, therefore, we need to 
solve this both the social for the economical and also the technological solution that means multi pronged approach should be adopted for solving this problem right so uh, let me just tell you the global co2 emissions is uh, uh, if you look at india is 7% of the total and we are having 130 crore people so therefore it is very very less okay whereas china is 30% united states is 15% right and european 9% of course others are there that means we are not really polluting that much okay <laughs> but if we we'll minimize our util utilization then naturally we we'll can solve the problem and we can be self sustained also provided we will move to the agro based energy uh, uh, production and also consumption right so with this i'll tell you a lot of work can be done particularly in the combustion front provided we understand the fundamental of combustion and in the next lecture we will be basically starting the thermodynamics of the combustion or whatever related to the combustion that thermodynamics we will be discussing in the next lecture. Thank you very much.